Hi. Um, my friend the other day said that he missed my videos. And this particular friend is like a huge deal. Like, I can't even get into it. But, like, he runs a site that I've mentioned before. And because of this site, I have a lot of online friends. Like, it's an online community and everything. So, like, thanks to him, um, a lot of people are in my life, and it's a huge deal. So, uh, I'm not doing this as an obligation. I'm doing this because, yeah, I think about Because I actually did, you know, it's funny. A few months ago, I did an update video, and it was like 40 minutes of me talking. And then uh, there was something with the mic, which I actually did the test video before I did this one. Uh, but it was like the microphone uh, was set on you know, something, and but like the settings were wrong, and so there was no audio. It wasn't even crappy audio, it was just no audio at all. I was like so fucking discouraged, but anyway, um, there I go, you know, swearing. Um, I know, oh yeah, and I just want to say, I'm sorry, this is incredibly dark, but this is the best that I'm gonna get, you know, this is the best you're gonna get, so. Unless I, like, go outside, but I don't think the neighbors want to see me. You know, like, every couple weeks we get Mexicans that put a church flyer on our door. And we're atheists, and then so it really pisses us off. But anyway, um, you can't really see that, can you? I'm wearing, uh, Ninja Turtle pajama bottoms. But anyway, um... I'm gonna, like, w wear these until, like, they rot off my body, apparently. Um, uh, because I wear them, like, constant. It's like, um, uh, you know what, like, on The Simpsons, when they wear the same outfit, it's like that. Um, anyway, uh, last night was the season finale of Walking Dead. If you haven't watched it, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but that was pretty intense. Like, I can't really... Like, a lot of people say I'm going to quit watching the show. Not that show specifically, but I was... Watched, I read a comment on Facebook about another show, and someone said, I'm going to stop watching this show. It's getting ridiculous. I'm not really like that. Like, I don't... I'm not really like a show jump the shark. Um, Which, I get that whole concept, but it's one of those things where... I know it's TV, but I see them as, like, an actual character. Like, on the show Shameless. That's, like, my Sunday night. I watch Shameless and I watch The Walking Dead. Uh, which we're having money problems, so I'm going to have to, like, work really hard just to keep the cable TV on. But, anyway. Um. So. I, anyway, that's, like, my Sunday night. I, like, record. Because they're both on the, at the same time, so I like, record them both, and The Talking Dead as well, uh, which I didn't watch at first, but Chris Hardwick is, like, adorable, so it's kind of like, uh, you have to watch that just because, and la last night he, this guy, because they take calls to ask the people questions and stuff, and of course, and this guy, he was like, the end is near, and it was like the creepiest thing, and he was like, the world's going to explode now. We're so scared. Uh, and it wasn't like, it didn't sound like a troll. It sounded like someone that is like really serious. He has such a serious voice. Uh, anyway, it's like when you're a kid and someone is like, uh, what, what would happen if you said Bloody Mary looking into the mirror? It's kind of like that. It, it was like really freaky. Um, uh, but anyway, and then Shameless was cool, too. Shameless is, like, the show Roseanne, kind of, because they're, like, white trash and, like, chaos happens. But, like, you see an occasional naked person have sex, like, uh, it's, sh it's showtime. So there's naked people, they're swearing, there's booze, there's cocaine or whatever. Um, so that's cool. And William H. Macy is on it. Um... And Fiona is like, not to 
this this computer's Harry's computer. Well, what happened was the router crapped out on us what a month ago or over a month ago, and so my laptop was crapping out anyway because like the video the video card would like crash and like it would guaranteed crash if I was watching a video in Firefox. So I started watching videos in Chrome, Google Chrome, and then having Firefox for Facebook and my emails and stuff. And so that was not, and it was just really slow. Like it would get slow for like a half hour and then speed up again or whatever. But anyway, I just, when the router crapped out that night when it did, I thought maybe it's the laptop, maybe it's the last leg. And so I went on to his and it still wasn't working. And so uh, I moved into, well, I put a Cat5 cable directly from the modem to the laptop and that worked. Um, and then I moved the router, there's a hub that we have that's hooked up to the printer so you can print wirelessly. And so that was hooked up to the router and without the router I couldn't print and I need to print. Um, I resell now, this so much, so much has changed. Um, I, for about a year now I've been reselling on eBay and Amazon and Craigslist. I buy something for like two dollars and I sell it for thirty or something. And there's a lot of things that we have in our house to sell and for some reason I'm looking down at the clock um, and I bet that's super annoying I apologize I'm gonna look at you guys now um, so anyway um, I'm on his computer and like if you don't if it's idle for like five minutes it starts to go to sleep it's so annoying and then I try to change the settings and said you have to go to the administrator. I'm like, I am the administrator, you fucking retard. <laughs> or, sorry. Um, like, I shouldn't watch my words, but that was kind of... Um, I'm, I'm used to watching Reckless Eating, so they, like, have a black friend, and they're like, um, what are you doing, you jungle bunny? And they're, like, friends, so it's okay. He's like, fucking, you know, fuck you, you fucking honky, or whatever. And then they have a good laugh. Uh, but anyway, I love them. The one thing is that would bother other people, but it doesn't bother me, is they post like two videos a day. They post a lot of videos. And so uh, people don't, people would not appreciate that. Um, and I also love the cinemastob.com. I love like Brad's stuff. Like seriously, his videos make me, like, if I was on the brink of suicide, I would not kill myself just watch his videos, um, uh, because it's a lot. It's, like, important to me. It's more, more important. I'm, I'm looking down here still. It's more important than, uh, it should be. But anyway, I have an item, um, to sell. I have such Asperger's, because I, like, don't want to make eye contact. I want to, like, look at the wall. Um, but anyway, uh, I have an item that uh, is a frequency generator, and it was from storage, and hopefully the person is not going to be like, it doesn't work, because I specifically said it doesn't work. You either use the parts out of it, or you try to fix it or something, and um, I'm only selling it for like 10 bucks plus shipping, so they should be happy with it. And... Also, um, his mom had, we have this storage that we're cleaning out, and he's been paying $90 on it for, like, ever, so he, uh, we need to clean it out, and we're cleaning out things, and I have these towels that I just listed, what was it, yesterday morning? We did not have Easter dinner. Um, we're atheists, but I still, I'm a girl, so... I love a good excuse to have a nice dinner and to be fancy. Um, and I made like two plates of deviled eggs for the both of us, for two people. Uh, they will be gone. Trust me on that. Uh, they will be, they will be gone. They will not be wasted. Um, and my cousin's girlfriend 
you can consider them like married. Like he has a thing because his ex his ex wife was like so evil she was like traumatic to him so he doesn't want to get married again so um you can consider them married uh like on shameless he calls it ghetto married <laughs> but anyway um oh yeah kev and that show is super hot but anyway i'm going on um this what was i saying um there she had bought all these towels his mom bought, his mom in the storage bought all these towels with tags on them. And Christmas towels, non-Christmas towels. I kept a few for myself, of course. And then the ones that are really girly and really, like, flowery um, that have tags on them, even though they were rained on a little bit, but I specifically wrote wash them. I can't wash them because they have tags on them. Well, some of them have text on them, some of them don't. They were obviously, like, never used. She must have got them, like, uh, on sale or something. So, anyway, I have three listings of those, and then these, like, yarn dolls that she made, uh, that are, like, uh, not my style, but, you know, they're cute. But, you know. Hold on. They're, like, right here. It's like really super dark in this room, but see, and they like don't have legs, which is totally creepy. They have like this stub, but anyway, they're like amputees. But yeah, I'm selling those for fifteen dollars a piece. Um, I have them just forty-five total. Um. I mostly don't put the shipping separate. I put the shipping in the cost because I've heard that's a good idea. And so, yeah, and then I have books, electronic items, stuff like that on Amazon. And then I put vintage stuff, um, basically everything else on eBay, like vintage stuff. Uh, I buy nostalgic stuff that I'm interested in. Uh... I bought a Ninja Turtle like little kid suitcase a few weeks ago that I listed and, and things like that I'm just interested in. One time I sold a Ghostbusters lunchbox which was totally cool. I have an Urkel pull string doll in there that's in the box. The box is really beat up. Maybe that's why no one's buying it. I don't know but it, the box is really beat up but it's in the box so I bought it for like three for like four dollars and then I bought a Walkman, like an AM, AM FM radio Walkman. It was in the package still, but I think it's because of time and the glue deteriorated. But it's like the the card, the plastic, but they're like not glued together. Um, someone just put a rubber band around them um, and called it good. So uh, it doesn't look like it was open though. There was there's no. It's just the card and the plastic are separate, but anyway, um, I have that listed for like 50 bucks or something. I bought it for like four. Uh, I wish everything was like that, though. I have so many. It's actually not a good idea, but I do it anyway. Or if something's on there for like $10, because the fees and everything, you don't really make much. Um, but that's beside the point. I do enjoy it, even though it's very tedious. It's one of those things where you have to love what you're doing to resell. You have to love it with a passion, or you will not like it. It's like any business. You have to love doing it. You can't just do it for the money. It's like that in general. Um, but anyway, I needed to use Harry's printer, so I hooked it up. <laughs> I'm going back to that story. I needed to use the printer, so I put the laptop where Harry sits kind of in the ki kitchen area um like over here anyway um and i put a web uh cat5 cable into the hub to use the printer and i've been sitting there ever since uh because uh that's kind of cool to just sit where he sits um 
it's a kind of a pain in the butt in the way that I'm right where he passes into the where the bathroom is in the bedroom. Uh, but most of the time I, I'm just sitting there. Like I was doing something, I was listing the items yesterday morning and it was so annoying because I had to put the items like on the floor where I was and I had to like move them every time he passed through. And uh which is a lot because of his health issues. He has to pee a lot. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I have a, I'm not going to show up, but I have a postage, or a, what's it called? A postal scale. I needed, like, I realized I needed one right away. When I started reselling, I realized I needed one right away. Um, it's actually more convenient because you don't have to stand in line. You still have to go to the post office. You can get it where the postal carrier picks up your stuff, but I, that would make me nervous, um, doing that because someone can, like, steal the package from your step. Um, we don't live in, like, a crime-ridden area, but we definitely, like, that would just make me nervous to just... I would feel naive is all to say oh the the postal carrier w will pick it up because I uh, watched this video once and this person said they lost two hundred dollars because people were just and it wasn't even that valuable stuff it was just random stuff and someone was just selling it just because they could and so she stopped doing it she stopped putting it on her doorstep even though that was an isolated incident that's still the thought but anyway, you just like put it on the counter at the post office and the shipping is a little cheaper and it's just overall more convenient um, to do it online and to do it through eBay or whatever. And through Amazon because we were paying out of pocket for shipping and then I would get reimbursed later. So on Amazon, you it take it gets out of your total. Um the shipping and then you don't have to worry about paying for shipping at the post office and then getting the money later you don't do that it comes out of out of it if it, you pay the shipping through their site so that's cool um so anyway it was thirty five dollars and it was well it's probably paid for itself you know just out of the convenience and i can really i'm not that good at judging how much things weigh and so i was like yeah, this will only be like $10. It's probably only a pound. And then it would be really five pounds. I have no sense of how much things weigh. So um, you have to factor in the packaging and everything. But still, I was just like totally off. Because I don't... Something could weigh two ounces. And I would say it weighs a pound and vice versa. So... Um, and also, if you ever ship anything and it's... If it's 13 ounces or less, ship it first class because it's cheaper and it gets there in two to three business days. So, yeah, food for thought. It's even cheaper than media mail because I sell books um, and I always choose first class shipping. And media mail takes longer. It's like, why pay more to have it? Get there in like 10 business days when you can pay less and ha it having to go there in three days. Uh, that's what I think. I always treat, I always think of if I were the customer, what would I want? Um, I always think about it that way. And I always po put a business card in with the item. And I tried to get a business card. I had like a free twenty dollar credit on Shutterfly. I was like, oh cool, free business cards, no. Um, because the format was like name, address and stuff. The, the information I put in and I was like, oh well I can just put whatever. No, the format it would screw up the format. Because you know it says like preview publish. It would like totally look weird, so 
I could not do that. Um, I do go to 123prints.com. Uh, every once in a while they have a sale where you do not pay shipping and usually I'm broke at the time so the last time I it's so funny I it was free shipping and then I got the business cards it's like five dollars and then it's like it's like about nine dollars total if it's not free shipping uh, nine or ten dollars um, for like a hundred and of course it's cheaper if you get more but I kind of figure like I'll get tired of the design when I get towards the bottom of the stack so I kind of like it when it's a hundred because then I'll just order a different design next time but anyway one two three prints is better for me that way because you can like type something in and then make move your mouse and then put it wherever um, but anyway I put on my Amazon link and my my eBay username which is all lowercase g o o b i a n just like this um, username but all lowercase and then the number one um, that's what my username is on eBay if you want to look and then my Amazon link is totally complicated and so I'm not even going to fucking tell you that one um, I'll probably put it in the description um, I'll put both of course, just if you want to look, you know. Um, I'm not really good at being like a salesman. It's just one of those things. Just look if you like me, whatever. Um, anyway, uh, this, well, more personal than that. Um, and also, it reselling like really boosted my confidence because for years I told myself that I couldn't do anything. <laughs> and so, Finding something I enjoy and that I can actually do, um, I like, I'm like, oh my god, I can do things. And so, it, it just changed my whole life. So anyway, um, uh, the end of October, this doesn't show like a, a time or anything, how long I've been talking, that's not good. Um, the end of October, um, I broke up with Jennifer, um, and I know you're thinking, of course you did, because she's in New York and you're there. Um, this is, I can't really talk about it. I know it's, like, really dark, but you can tell, like, I'm really emotional right now. I, um, it's just, it's just such a sensitive subject. It's, like, one of those things where... You know, at the end of a relationship, I don't know if you've ever dated before, whoever's watching this, um, but you know, like, at the end of a relationship, like, beginning of a relationship, things are, like, you can forgive certain things, and certain things are kind of cute in a way. Um, uh, yeah, and then towards the end, those things start to get annoying and great on you. That's what's, ha that's what was happening. Um, I can't really get into it, especially because when I broke up with her, I wanted things to ha end the best way possible, of course. And um, so I promised to not, like, say anything bad about her character. And she said, I won't say anything bad about you either. And it was kind of beautiful in that way, but... Um, I can't tell you anyway. Like, you don't want to hear it anyway if you're my friend. Because it was mostly sexual stuff that she'd ask me to do. And it wasn't like, you know, she didn't, like, ask me to fuck a dog or anything. I would never do that. But it wasn't like that. It was harmless, and that's the reason why I did it. And so that kind of got annoying. Like, stuff that she would ask me to do kind of, it felt like a chore and not. Like, and it's not a big deal, because I think in the beginning I was like, my girlfriend asked me to do this, because I still, like, towards the end, I was like, I'm happy just to say that I have a girlfriend, because I went, like, ten years without dating anybody, and of course I had a Harry, but it was one of those things where I just liked referring to a girlfriend, like, my girlfriend Jennifer said she likes tacos or something, that sounded weird, um, but it's one of those things where 
okay, she doesn't want kids and I want kids. And I just felt like I was not wanting to spend my life waiting for her to move here. Because it was obvious she wasn't going to. And so it was like I still want to save up when I can afford to. I still want to save up to go see her. But it's one of those things where I just felt like I needed to move on. And then I had a, like a brief relationship with another girl that was 19 years old and she acted 13. Like she acted totally immature and she had a one-year-old, which made it worse. And then I said, you have to admit, if you waited until you were older to have a child, it, you would have been better at being a mom. And then she took that very offended. Um... And I still, it's hard for me to let go of people, so I'm still, like, I wish she didn't cut me off, you know what I mean? But it's one of those things where, um, she wanted to have a baby, another baby with someone and then be a welfare mom, and I was not okay with that. And I said, I'm not okay with this, and you need to get your shit together before you have another one, even though she has an ovarian sister or something, and so... She might not even be able to have another kid anyway after the surgery. Um, and she says the doctors are dragging their feet and not giving her surgery. I would think if they're a legit doctor, they wouldn't drag their feet. But anyway, um, it's just irresponsible. And she said, like, it justifies it because I'm benefiting society raising children to be good people or whatever. So... Um, it was really disappointing, and for Valentine's Day, I sent her a package, and so I didn't feel ripped off, because I did it willingly, but it was one of those things where, like, I can't believe I did that for this fucking screwball girl that I got attached to, you know what I mean? And I have a package for Jennifer sitting in the other room, um, and it's not as big as I used to send her packages, I used to send her package for, packages for Valentine's Day. Her birthday, which is in July, um, and Christmas, and what, the first year we were dating, we dated for three and a half years, um, the first Halloween I sent her a bunch of candy, because she said she didn't have candy, um, and so I was like, I'll send you candy then, and I don't know why, but I felt we could afford it at the time, we can never afford anything, but anyway, um, it's one of those things with Jennifer, she always appreciated when I sent her something, and so she never took it for granted, and so I think that's one of the reasons, but before I ha had, I dated her, I wanted to have a girlfriend to spend money on, and I, I think that makes sense, but, um, I felt like the second I felt like I could trust her, I wanted to send her something just because I always wanted to have a girlfriend to do that. So anyway, there was some, um, she loves spicy food, so uh, there was some spicy food stuff that I wanted to buy for her at the store. And she loves licorice. We both love licorice. And there's this licorice spice tea, that stash brand tea uh, that Harry and I love. So she asked me, I said, so how many boxes do you want, Jennifer? She goes, like, five tea bags. Like, not that much. I just want to taste it. And I said, really? I could send you, like, ten boxes of it. She goes, no. Just, like, a couple tea bags. I just want to see how it tastes. And she's a tea drink. She's a tea drinker normally. She doesn't drink coffee or anything, whatever. So... It's hilarious. I was like, so you want, how many cases do you want? Just like five tea bags out of the box you buy for yourself. She's so modest. That's her modesty. That's her not wanting me to sacrifice that much for because she feels like she's not worth sacrificing for. And so it's in there. It's just like $12 shipping. It's one of the medium flat rate shipping boxes. It's like $11 and something. So when I feel I can afford it, I'll send it. It's there's nothing in there. It's like, like barbecue sauce is one thing. It's like really spicy barbecue sauce. It's stuff like that that I don't, it's not perishable items. So I don't need to send her it right away because it will go bad. Um, 
it can sit there for a while. Um, and the new carrot cake M&Ms, I like put it in a little bit of a sandwich bag and um, just so can, she can try those. And she's so dense sometimes because she would not see that in a million years at the store. And I kept on telling her, find the licorice tea, find it, it's really good. And she said, I can't find it. And it's probably right in front of her. I told her about the CVS coupon machine that's in the front of the store. And for months she couldn't find it. And then she said, guess what? I found the machine. And I said, it was right under your nose, wasn't it? She said, it, would have been, it wouldn't have been more obvious if it hit me in the face. It was hilarious because that's such her type. is. She just is totally oblivious to stuff. And I see everything like that. Um, like every new product in the store, I see it. Um, I'm just that person. I'm just like... I, I see that stuff because I'm interested in, especially if it's like super gimmicky, I, I'm like, I gotta try this. I'm such a sucker for that stuff. It like makes me happy. Um, so whatever. Um, I guess I can tell you guys about what happened. Uh, I've been talking to this guy casually for like eight months and we kept on missing each other. He kept on saying, you know, uh, I want to come over tomorrow, tomorrow. And I would say, okay, I have no plans tomorrow. And then he would cancel it last minute. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt. And one time, um, I thought he treated me like he didn't want me to think for himself or he didn't want me thinking for myself. He just wanted me to just be like a robot. And that pissed me off. And this was like, what, three months ago? And so I was like, screw you, buddy. I'm going to go, you know, fuck someone else. And I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to fuck you. I'm going to fuck him. And he's going to enjoy himself or something. Because I'm a bitch, you know. I don't know if you know this, but I can be like a super bitch. He's like, okay, whatever. That's what you want. And then, um... I went back in like a week and a half and then now it was one of those things where I was vulnerable because I'm a very ever since I broke up with Jennifer I've been very vulnerable like I don't know where I'm going in my life I'm very lost and very I want chocolate ice cream and then five minutes later I want a burrito like I don't know what where I'm going right now and I'm very confused as to what I want and I felt like being vulnerable to him he was going to reassure me it would be okay no he said I'm tired of your shit you get your shit together and it wasn't in a tough love sort of way it was like I'm tired of your shit um you're always giving me problems and that was such a carry move like I don't know if you watched the video I talked about Carrie and how horrible he he was, how heartbroken I was about that. Um, but the second a guy starts acting like Carrie now, like the benefit I have of that situation is the second someone starts acting like him, I cut them off. Um, and I have no remorse over it. It's just I can't, like if I got attached to a guy like I was attached to him, I would probably kill myself if he broke up with me. I was so obsessed with him. So uh, for my safety, I need to like cut someone off the second they act manipulative like he was. And this guy was kind of acting manipulative in the way he always, I would call him out on his bullshit and then he would say, it's your fault. Um, he would never take blame for anything. What's up with people that don't take blame? Like be an adult and if you did something wrong, it's your fault. Um, it's not like, you know, it's, you know, when uh, guys are wife beaters and they're like, you know, it's your fault that I hit you. What the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, I've been in emotionally abusive relationships and I'm usually pretty smart. But I've been in, like, emotionally abusive relationships where they always blame me. Like, I didn't come over because of you. And he said I'm irrational, and he was afraid, like, the 
when you would be in the middle of something and I would just totally flip out on him and he couldn't handle it. And so that's one of the reasons why he kept on putting off. And I never met this guy in person. Um, and because he would cancel, he would always cancel last minute. But anyway, this time it was one of those things where it was like, okay, um, you come over, um, or we're not going to talk anymore. And he was kind of vulnerable in his way. He was like, you know what? I'm just really discouraged. And it seems like we're never going to meet up. And I'm just really upset right now. And I said, it'll be okay. You know, we just have to keep trying to meet up. And then, okay, what happened was he goes, okay, well, I can meet up 10 o'clock tomorrow. And I said, okay, um, I'll get enough sleep. And then I'll make sure to be up at 10. And I didn't get my hopes up because he canceled so many times before. But I was still kind of thinking there's a chance he'll come over. And then he didn't even email me. Because usually he would email me last minute and say, I'm sorry, I, I, something came up. This time he didn't even email me. He just stood me up completely. And then he like, just completely, he was such an asshole. And I said, I really enjoyed waiting for you to not show up. And then he goes, oh, I'm sorry. I just, I went to Portland instead for personal reasons. And I said, yeah, like you fucked someone else. That's what you fucking did. And I just completely went off on him. Um, it was one of those things where you do not want to be my enemy type of email because I can get fucking evil. Um, and I just basically said he was the scum of every human being that's ever lived, and he's a sick fuck, or whatever I said, and I said, I'm glad I've never had sex with you, I'm glad you never showed up, uh, because in the long run, if someone, you never meet someone with, in person like that, you're just glad that they never had the pleasure of doing that with you, um, in the long run, but anyway, he, he said, he said, you're crazy, I don't want to ever talk to you ever again, please don't email me ever again, and I, that just made me even more pissed off, like, it was one of those situations where he couldn't have said anything, like, if he apologized, I guess that would have been okay, but it was one of those things where anything he would have said made it worse, and so, um, yeah, I'm over him. Like, it's one of those things where you get in a situation where you have so many people that you have a relationship with. One isn't that big a deal. You're not completely devastated. Um, you can get to a point where you're attached to someone. Like, I saw someone this weekend and I, um, you know, he doesn't live local, uh, unfortunately. He was just here on business, but, um... He was totally nice and totally cool and everything, so that's awesome. I wish he lived local, and he probably wishes he lived local, too, just, you know, so he could see me on a regular basis. But anyway, um, so that's awesome. Um, oh, going back to Jennifer, I, like, I still love her, and she's still a piece of me, and I don't want anyone feeling like, that's a horrible thing that happened. Um, it was just a time to move on and a time to change. You know, the only thing constant is change, and I do feel good knowing that this part of my, this time in my life is about myself. Um, and I do reassure myself sometimes that it was the thing to do. Um, if we kept on dragging on like it was, we would have just been fooling ourselves, I guess. But anyway, um, I think it was one of the most adult things I've ever done uh, to, to make that decision. Because she would have went on forever if I let her. Because she, I was very important to her. And she feels, because she's mute, she cannot, she's very attractive. But she feels like she would be a burden on someone if she's mute and she can't. Like getting the bottom of the barrel would be 
some, you know, better than what she deserves or something. She's really down on herself. Um, and I wish she would just see herself as great of a person as she is. She's so strong. She's so strong-willed. And I've always appreciated that about her, but, um, I do, you know, like, I have moments where I think, man, I wish she was here, or, you know, uh, I wish, or whatever, you know, I, I think that, but it was something that needed to happen, um, anyway, my battery, this is not connected to the, the, the power, to the, um, oh man, anyway, uh, it's not connected to the, uh, outlet, so that I'm running on battery, um, so, uh, yeah, uh, what else is going on, um, I don't know, just Harry's home, like, he's on disability permanently, and, um, I enjoy having him home. I enjoy, sometimes I wish he was gone, honestly, because I miss my alone time. I miss when I had the house to myself, uh, because I felt like that was my alone time, and that was when I could make noise in the house and not disturb him and things like that. Uh, but overall, I enjoy having him home. And uh, it seems we talk more, obviously. And he's not on edge because his work was very stressful. So he's not on edge like he was and freaking out as much. He still worries about money, of course, but he doesn't worry about... Because he would worry about losing his job. Um... His job was very, uh, something would screw up and he would take the blame for it, even though it wasn't his fault. And so he was worried about losing his job because of things like that. And, um, so yeah, he was very stressed. Um, I, uh, so... Yeah, uh, I'm glad that he doesn't have to do that anymore. Even though he doesn't have a sense of purpose anymore, he doesn't feel like he has a reason to get up. Besides me, he feels like he doesn't have a reason to get up in the morning, so that kind of sucks. I don't know, I've never had that sense of needing to have a job. <laughs> now this makes me look like a loser, but I've never had, um, like I need to work. And it's not about the money, it's about knowing that I'm good for something. Um, I have an ego in the sense of me just existing is enough. Me just talking to people is enough. I don't need to have a job to define my existence. Um, I do need a job in order to make money, but that's it. Um, if it wasn't about the money thing, I don't feel like I have any reason to have a job. And I ho hope that doesn't make me look like a douche. It's the, it's the truth. Um, I feel like, you know, some people, they work at like 7-Eleven just to have something to do. Um, you know, someone can be like filthy rich, but they still have a crappy job just to have a place to go. Um, I swear there's people out there that are like that. I swear I've met them. Or I've heard about them. And so, uh, I could never, like, if I was rich, I would be like, okay, I'm rich. I'm money, like, I might, my stress would be over because of money. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so that's good about me. Um, oh, and I, back to the tea thing. I'm getting into tea. Um, I, we have like a three, cup corningware like little teapot that I put on the stove and so that's nice it's a lot better than just putting it in the microwave um it's warm warm for a lot longer but anyway um spring is coming up 
I'm actually really looking forward to, there was this jello, like red, white, and blue jello cake that I made last year. It was so good. So I can't wait till 1st of July to make that. Like I keep on thinking about it. Um, so I can't wait to make that. I have like, we haven't eaten Easter dinner because of, uh, you know, I wasn't up. So I like stayed up till two in the afternoon and then I went to bed. I was up at like one o'clock in the morning and, or two o'clock in the morning. And then he went to bed. And so I'm going to have to take a nap and then get up and have it tonight. Um, I have orange salad, which I actually have a video making orange salad, um, on my channel. Um, and it's so good. Like, I don't make it. I only make it during, like, the holidays. I could eat it, like, once a week and not get tired of it, I don't think. But I only make it during the holidays. And, um, so, yeah. I have, like, two plates of deviled eggs in there. Which, trust me, I will eat them. I'm repeating myself. Uh, wow. It's like in Clerks when he goes, I didn't have to be here today or something. And, uh, yeah, I totally butchered that. But you know what I mean. And it's like, uh, yeah. Like, didn't you just say that? Didn't you say the beginning of the film? <laughs> Um, and I hate it when people say, oh, Kevin Smith is God or whatever. Like, people worship him. I'm like, like, I love some of his movies, but not most. You know? Like, I like three of his movies. But I don't worship Quentin Tarantino. No, I don't worship people. I don't worship celebrities. Um, I feel like we're all, I'm not a snob, but I'm not, I don't worship celebrities. I don't talk about celebrities in the way other people do. Other people do. Did you hear how I said that? Other people do. So, um, I'm totally not. And then, like, the whole gay marriage thing came up, so I argued with people for, like, three days. I actually learned some things about the Bible and how people are hypocritical for quoting that one passion passage in the Bible, or in the Old Testament. People don't, um refer to the Old Testament uh, as their way of life. They worship, they refer to the New Testament from what I've heard. And um, so it's one of those things where if you say, well, it says in Leviticus, well, you can't say that anymore. It's not relevant. Um, and if you say it's relevant, then you also have to say that it's not okay to wear mixed clothing and blah 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 so it's it's just people are so full of it like they just use the bible as a excuse to hate people and if like i've i've argued with people about it and then they say the bottom line is the picturing two guys having sex is gross that's that's what they say they say i admit it it's just two guys having sex is gross so i don't want people doing that um, and then it's like, well, snails, like, you don't need to eat snails, but maybe it's the best thing ever for other people. Um, and so, just because you don't like eating snails, it doesn't mean that we should ban it for everyone. Um, but anyway, that's like my rant about that. Um, that, did you hear that accent? Like, sometimes I talk in an accent that is not... I grew up in Oregon, so I should have an Oregonian accent. I occasionally have, like, a hick accent or something, and I say, like, out, I say out, like a, like a Canadian. It's so, it's like, I say a bo, 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 like, I swear. I say, oh, I don't know what that's a bo, bo, or something. And I'm totally crazy, and I started doing that, like, what, four years ago or something, just not on purpose. Why do I start talking different? That's the craziest thing ever. And I started telling Harry, I'm like, I shouldn't have pronounced it that way. Why did I say that? Um, why did I say it that way? He goes, I don't know. That's, 
how guys talk. They're like, whatever, I don't know. Um, you know, you, you say something, you go on a rant for 20 minutes, and then you say, what do you think? Um, swear. I swear. That's what happens. But anyway, I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, the end. I swear I could find something else to talk about, but I've been talking for as long as I should, you know, for a really, really long time. Um, so anyway, I hope this isn't the most annoying video ever. Um, and you know, people on YouTube, they think I'm a guy. I'm not. I'm a girl. And I know they wouldn't watch an hour long video just mean to say that but it's incredibly annoying because like look like I have boobs like I have 65 D boobs and I tell them that and they're like you could just say that and be a liar I start I, I get in arguments or, or not necessarily arguments but I'm like I'm a girl no you're not they tell me that I don't know what gender I am. I would think I'm the one to know. It's like if I say I'm Jody and then they say no you're not you're Steve or something. Why like I understand why they argue is because they're a troll but it's like why would I not know my name or my gender or anything. Um, it's one of the most idiotic arguments ever is to say you're a boy. Well, I'm a girl. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> you know. But it gets, it's not as, it's an, it's an, it's annoying more than it's offensive uh, to c keep on correcting people. It's like, uh, just seeing the same error over and over again. And I'm like, I'm a girl. Especially because my older tutorial videos, I get a lot of comments on those. And they're like, thanks, dude. I'm like, I'm not a dude, but thanks. Oh, okay, whatever, man, or something. I'm like, I'm not a man, but whatever. Like, I get those comments all the time. So, even on those where they only see my, they only hear my voice, they think I'm a boy. Um, and whatever, I'm not. I'm a girl. Um, I sit down when I pee, and, yeah, uh, I understand people are transgender, I'm not, um, I do have masculine traits, but I'm a girl, I'm not masculine enough to be a boy, but whatever, I'm not, I don't have penis envy, I like the parts that I have, uh, my boobs could be smaller, but that's beside the point. What, isn't that way too much information? Um, I would have been happy being born with like A cups, you know? Just to be like, I have boobs, but they're not that big, but they're there. Um, because these are a pain in the butt. And one of my tranny friends is getting a boob job, and yeah. Um, mm hmm. So, uh, yeah, like, I'm not offended. Like, it's their body, whatever. But, yeah, they're getting them way too big. They're getting them bigger than mine, and mine are big. So, yeah, they're not going to like that. They're not going to like it as much as they think they will. That's my opinion. Um, but whatever. They can fuck. Like, say you're an alien and fucking, you know, dye your skin green for all I care, you know. You're not dying my skin green. Um, I think that's it. I think I've offended everyone. Um, yeah, H how many... Like, I hate elderly people. Okay, now I've offended everyone. <laughs> I hate young people. And I hate people my age. Uh, so, yeah, I... I've covered all my bases now. Um, yeah, uh, uh, -huh. yeah. Okay, now I'm going now. <laughs> I'm going now. Goodbye. Until next time.
Um, it could be like two years, it could be two minutes, but before you get a next video, uh, really. Anyway, see ya.